right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. I am delighted to welcome Jim Heatner, who is in Colorado. How are you doing, Jim? Doing great. Thank you. Yeah, and Jim is the CEO and founder of Hebner Integrated Marketing, a 34-year-old company devoted to helping manufacturing brands become more relevant to their customers and sales channels and to become more profitable in the, pro in, in the process. And as you can see beside Jim, there is his book, uh, The Irrelevant Old Brand. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today is brand relevance across industries. And by the way, I have to, I have to, I, I get a chuckle out of your bio where he says a husband of one, a father of three, a grandfather of four. Proudly. <laughs> I, I, Proudly like, put, I, like, yeah. I like the husband of one Yeah. Um, because yep. husband to more than one person at a time <laughs> it can be challenging. I yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, you see it on TV, but I, I don't, I don't see it working for myself. So no. or, or my wife. Yeah. So. Um, so let's go, let's get straight into a brand relevance across industries. It's getting it's getting harder and harder, I think, for you know, because um, especially for brands when you do operate across a lot of different mm -hmm. uh, industries, is everything is becoming very specific now. So you get kind of caught in this trap of you know, how do I stay relevant uh, if I'm going across kind of horizontally across industries. Uh, and and yet at the same time appeal to them vertically. I mean, it's a huge challenge, right? Yeah, it's. I, I think um, what happens is companies get sometimes focused on uh, just the day to day of doing business, and they they sort of forget sometimes um, why customers are doing business with them in the first place. You know, it's that you know. Um, and not that they lose it overnight; it doesn't happen overnight, mm -hmm. um, typically. But it, it's it's kind of like losing their way. And and you know, as I I mentioned at the beginning of my books, just you know, there's 550,000 companies that go out of business every year. And um, granted, most of those, vast majority of those, are very small businesses. But at the same time, you do have your big businesses that go out too. And and you think, well, how does that happen? How does a blockbuster or mm -hmm. you know? Um, Toys R Us, how, how does that happen to companies like that? And I think the bottom line is, is they become irrelevant in one way or another. And uh, relevance is not just, it's, it's not relevant to a customer necessarily in, in one way. It can, you know, you're relevant in many ways um, or can be, but I, but I think um, not focusing on uh, staying meaningful, staying important, staying um, top of mind and, and staying, um, uh, you know, relevant in all sorts of different ways um, is where people, uh, our companies, sort of lose their their way sometimes. That's what we found with our clients. And and honestly, in the end, a lot of times it's just about um, it can even come down to just the messaging. Yeah, uh, their their business practices and everything are great, but it's like they're not telling their their audience what they really should be telling them about themselves particularly their prospects you know their customers may already know but but to grow um that's really where you need to resonate and and be relevant um mm -hmm. have a, a story that that is relevant to those prospects so. because i think part of the issue is that uh you know people don't uh, you know brands are living breathing things as you know yep. better than I. um but i feel like a lot of companies like they go through their branding exercises they get their messaging and then they just sit in it because they always think that if i evolve the brand well it's going to be hugely expensive and i'm going to have to do everything but you should be evolving the brand you should be evolving the messaging and all of that and and i think sometimes it gets conflated with oh and we're going to have to do a new logo and a new color scheme say, no 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 you just you got to make your to your point make your uh, message relevant yeah and i um the the so I have this this give um, kind of framework, G I V E, mm -hmm. that we we use internally, and the E is endless quest. You know, it it never ends. Yeah, but you you have to constantly evaluate what is most important to um, your customers and prospects. It's it's a it's a never ending, um, and it, at the same time, it's a never ending um, quest for opportunities too. I mean, there there may be things that you're doing. That you're not capitalizing on 
uh, internally that you could, um, that you find out through um, research and through conversations with your customers and those kind of things that you realize, wow, we're already doing this. We should offer this um, outside of, of this one client that we're offering it to. We should offer it to, to all of them. Um, I, you know, I have all these examples in my, in my mind of where those, that's happened, but I, I think in the end, um, yeah, it's, it's just a, a constant um, challenge and uh, to ever be relevant in the minds of your prospects. And mm -hmm. uh, that comes with just conversations and being, you know, constantly in touch with them and understanding uh, how things are changing and what's staying the same. So. Yeah. And we become, I mean, it's funny, it's even in large company, because you would assume large companies have lots of money and they can uh, do lots of research and all of that. But even in big companies, uh, you know, we tend to become our own frames of reference and we don't do the outreach. We don't check into things. I, I did it. I remember many years ago, I did a, a, a seminar one time and I was talking about changing buyer behavior. And at the Q&A at the end, somebody in the audience said, said how do we, how do we figure out the changes in our customers' buying behavior. And I was kind of, mm -hmm. this is a trick question. And then I was just like, well, you just ask them. And they were like, what? I said, literally ask them. Ask them, like, has your buying, you know, do you buy differently than you yeah. used? So to that point, I'm thinking we become very good at using ourselves as frames of reference. But to your point, you've, you've got your customers out there to help you understand what your brand really means. And at the end of the day, they're the owners of your brand, really. Yeah. We've, we found another good resource or other vendors, um, not necessarily ones that you compete with, but sure. but other vendors who are selling different things to that customer, and because they have their finger on the pulse of the market that you're in as well, and and they sometimes can be an incredible resource for uh, things that you're not necessarily seeing or or hearing, and that the customer is maybe taking for granted or um, not not. Um, verbalizing somehow to you and uh so it, it takes it's it's a so we we have a process just called um, the relevancy report and it, it it's just a measure of of how relevant you are to your customers and and we talk to you know other vendors we talk to your customers we talk to people who don't do business with you and, and are doing it with somebody else um we talk to internal staff key employees um we'll do um you know company-wide um email questionnaires and we try to compile all that into get, into getting a getting to the point and and it's not anything that's i mean lots of marketing agencies like ours do it i mm -hmm. think where you know the only thing that's unique for us is as would be unique for other agencies is you have experience in a certain industry and we, we've worked with manufacturers for nearly 30 years and that's just kind of where we you know that's that's our um mm -hmm you know our area of expertise and and so we're used to talking to manufacturers the people who supply to them and uh and 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 listening to um kind of those nuancey um, um mm -hmm. items and not so much uh the general you know statements and and you get a lot of those and and particularly in email that's why we like uh actual conversations sure. you know, one on one in person or o at least over the phone because they'll they'll say these little things where you pick up and you go okay let's explore that a little bit and and understand why that's important um and uh then i the example i give in the book and this is actually you know in the book i i didn't use any uh of our real clients but i used some scenarios that were sure. that really happened um, and one of the examples was we, we, this company was starting to lose, um, some, um, traction and lose sales and, and they were getting beat up on price. And, and as we dug into it, um, what we found is the, the purchasing departments were the ones that were, were kind of canceling them. You know, they were, mm. they were, they weren't price competitive, but the ones who were specking them in their, their product were the engineers and so we had these talks with these engineers and they made a product that that uh, was used on deep sea exploration on robots um, right. and they said well you got to understand um you know the extra money we spend on their product on our client's product uh is is nothing compared to you know the fact that we can just depend and rely on it when it's on the mm -hmm. ocean floor 
Right. Um, we it has to work. We can't we can't take the chance that it's not going to work. And theirs is infallible, you know, basically. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and that was the kind of the nugget that we we needed to hear because they had always talked about quality, but quality is you know it's a subjective sure. term, mm -hmm. and everybody yeah, says yeah. it. And yeah. What is it about the quality? What is it specifically? that's causing you to say i have to have this product uh and and that's what we like to try to zero in on then and and again it's not always just one thing it's it can be messaging it can also be the way things are made it can be um the way they're delivered the way they're you know there's all sorts of, of factors that, that weigh into what makes a brand and a product and a service relevant to to their customers so and one of the things we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a lot, I, I, I think anyway, Jim, is uh, we're seeing a lot of brands now trying to create a story and trying to follow the latest, uh, you know, trend, whatever that is, or the latest buzzword or the latest thing. And and it finds that a lot of times these are kind of incongruent, right? And they look like exactly what they are. They look like shoehorning a uh, yeah. square peg into a round hole and they grate on you. But this seems to be... So how, when you work, how do you help companies like avoid, like be authentic, be who you are, but yeah. avoid like jumping on bandwagons? No, again, it just comes down to listening because you're right. Uh, it, a lot of times you'll see companies that the CEO or somebody will come up with a, a slogan they think represents mm -hmm. everything that their company's ever been and, and they want to use it. And it's like, okay, well, but how do you know that that's what is most meaningful mm -hmm. um, and is going to resonate and is actually true about you? Now, honestly, a CEO is probably not going to come up with something that's not true about them, but it, 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 it's, you know, Positioning is an art and a science yep. and the science is all the research, you know, it's, 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 it's everything that we, all the data we gather about the, the perceptions and the feelings and the, and the um, aura around the brand. But the reality is, is there is an art to it and it, and it's kind of in the storytelling, like you're saying, the storytelling has to, in the end, tap into that pain, that, um, that answer that that the prospect is looking for and um you have to understand what what that actually is and you, you know there's slogans come and go but in the end um it's it's it is how does it how is it resonating with with the customer in the end and that's really uh what's going to make a, a story mm -hmm. um connect is is if it's like you said if it's authentic and if it's real and um yeah, there's there's so many great stories out there that that um, over the last thirty years that we've kind of come across. We we had a a client um, who made uh, who built uh, pre-engineered steel buildings, right. and um, one of the things that that we we undertook a, a relevancy report with them and and. You know, as we talked to staff and and uh, different people in the company, they all had kind of different perspectives on why their customers did business with them. And um, I like telling this story because it, it really yeah. kind of clarifies how how it works. They it, some thought it was because they had a specially coated steel. Some thought it was because they had a fade resistant finish. Some thought it was because of their they had their own truck line. There was all these different perspectives on on why it was, but when we talked to um, um, customers, it was it was really more about their relationships and and the people and how they kind of had their backs always. So it wasn't even about the product; it was about it was about the way their customer service worked. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was at church one morning, and and there's a guy that worked at that company, and and I happened to strike up a conversation with him. I said, "So so what'd you do this weekend?" and he said, oh, I slept all day yesterday because uh, Thursday night we had gotten a quote from a, um, one of our contractors who needed a bid. Uh, he was an estimator, needed a bid the next morning. And so I pulled an all-nighter, got the bid done, got it sent out, went home, showered, and came back to work the rest of the day on Friday. And right there I thought, so that's exactly why their customers love them. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that was it. It was, And you have to have those conversations. You can't just guess. You can't just throw an email survey out there. You have to have these conversations to really kind of get stories like that, that then make it come to life uh, um, and, and 
gives you the kind of the framework you need to then build the messaging, to build the story, to build all those things. But again, that was a real story. And it was something that the vast majority of their customers experienced day in mm -hmm. and day out with them. And so that's what made it real. And that's what made it authentic is, is that we listened, you know, and, and yeah. I, I know you've had people on before that, that talk about the importance of listening and that, that really in the end is, is kind of what it's all about is not having a preconceived idea of everything that should be. And a lot of times you'll see that with, with marketing agencies, they think I got a great idea. And again, it's kind of like, how do you know it's a great idea? Um, I mean, it might be, and, and oftentimes it is, but you don't really know. And that's where we just love doing um, the balance of of the science and the art with it, and not just making it all about uh, mm. great ideas. You know what what we think are great ideas. So. No, I, lo I love that. I love that story, Jim, because I, I tell you, I took over a company no, um, a number of years back. You know, for the parent company, I took over this, and it had Hotway had, had actually been selling, and had a great, it had a great reputation in the marketplace. The product, uh, all of that, you know, the the training, the underlying philosophy and methodology. But when I joined, I said, "Okay, I better go. I should go out and talk to a bunch of our best customers." So I went on a bit of a road trip, and. They all told me almost the exact same thing. They all said, love your product, love your service, love when you do it, love when you implement it. People are fantastic, all of that. Mm -hmm. but you're really hard to do business with. And I was like, huh? And then they were saying, like, you never tell us what else you have. You, When we try to book things, we have to go through, the, jump through these hoops and all of that. And I came back and I was like, wow, that's an amazing piece of feedback because nobody at the company, and there was at the time, there was like 100 plus people working there. Nobody was aware that our customers were feeling that we were hard to do business with. So yeah. they're doing business with us because they liked the product. They were over, they were actually overcoming the obstacles <laughs> to give us money. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I think that that happens a lot. And, uh, you know, there's so many companies out there that I admire. And, uh, and you know, as much as some of the mega companies uh, are hated for whatever reasons, mm -hmm. you have to admire some of them. Uh, you know, you think about Amazon. Yeah. I mean... All he wanted to do was to make it as easy as possible to buy online. Yeah. And that's such a simple kind of concept. Um, and it's, it's almost like, duh, you know, um, don't we all, but just like you're saying, no, we don't all because yeah. we don't do it. We, mm -hmm. do, we, we don't think about that. How, what am I doing to make um, this harder than it should be? And uh, how can I get rid of it? Yeah. And uh, that's that's yeah. Like I said, that's one of the things I love about Amazon is is he he was just focused on doesn't matter what we're selling. Let's just make it as easy as possible. And um, you know, the rest mm -hmm. is history. <laughs> and 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 honestly, you know, as far as Aimbo's Quest, my E and Give is uh, he's the example I give because you know then they then they translate that to web services. Then they translate that to Whole Foods. You know, yeah. everything else that they're doing. They they. Um, um, he, he, yeah. he 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 uh, obsesses obsesses on logistics and yeah. you know, and and at the end of the day to your point is we want to click something online and we want it to appear at our doorstep and we don't care about what happens in between we just want it yeah. to be convenient don't want to see the how the baby's made we just want to see the baby yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. so just one last quick question um yeah. jim is what I find also today is a lot. There's a lot of uh, SaaS companies or online, you know, service and all of that, and they have no relationship with the majority of their subscribers, right? I mean, I have, I, I'm, I'm a customer of a bunch of them. Never hear from them, you know. Right. And the thing is that if somebody comes out with a product that's equal and cheaper, I'll buy it because mm. I have to, to the ones I'm using. Or if somebody has an extra feature or whatever. Yeah. You're not building any brand loyalty. And, and I feel like this, it's amazing, to be honest. And I don't know what future a lot of them have, but they don't build any connection. Right. No, and I think, uh, you know, I think of Slack. Slack, how are they doing? I haven't actually, now that you bring that up, I haven't actually analyzed why it works. But I will say, if I told everybody in our office that we're going to um, not use Slack anymore, we have a team of uh, mm -hmm. 70 in, in India. Um, that does all our development and you know between them and then our us based team if i said we're not going to use slack anymore i think they'd kill me right, <laughs> you know, right. there would be mutiny on the bounty so we i 
um, so Slack seems to, to build some kind of loyalty in there. Um, Google, you know, has its own um, uh, way of doing that. It's different though than like what we're talking about, particularly for me with manufacturing. Yeah. Manufacturing is more of the old school. Um, now, granted, as as we move forward and and even services like ours become uh, more automated and more uh, online. Um, I don't, you know, I mean, that that's always going to be a challenge in, in mm -hmm. front of all of us is, is how do we um, not just stay relevant, but how we stay connected. Um, yeah. And those kind of go hand in hand, I think, mm -hmm. too, because yeah. if you're not connected, you, you can become irrelevant pretty quickly, I think. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I don't know. That's not that that's something to think about. I um yeah, and it's a challenge. It's a challenge because I can see for a lot of uh, companies that they just come and go because, you know, they get a little bit of a bump and then people just move on to the next shiny new toy. Um, I suppose, yeah. Think about the ones that you've uh, used the longest, though. I suppose those would be the best examples. And and how are they staying relevant? I suppose mm. it's adding features or adding things. Although that's one of the crazy things. We have a SaaS company. And one of the, the things we tout is it's everything you 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 want. Let's see. What what do we say? We everything you need and and nothing that you don't. Right. Um, because I can't tell you how many SaaS products we buy that have ninety percent of the features we don't use, and we buy it for one feature. Yeah, um, yeah, or yeah. Two. yeah, yeah. You find that too? Oh, pff, all the time. Yeah, and uh, and and to be honest, a lot of the features you kind of scratch your head at going like, well, why would any why would anyone want that? You know, yeah. so kind of it. It definitely <laughs> it's a bit strange sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. But yeah, but great, great point. Question. Yeah, great point, uh, Jim. And thank you very much. Um, all of Jim's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little more about you and the work your company does. Okay. Well, um, yeah. So, so I started the, our agency uh, 34 years ago, um, 1989, in uh, my my duplex uh, that I lived in in Nebraska. We didn't have any air conditioning, and about six months into the summer. I, uh, and getting into the summer, I decided I probably need to move into a real office. <laughs> so did that, but you know, it's just a typical startup story. Just, we had nothing and now we have something. Um, and, uh, very thankful for that. Uh, started, we started another, uh, kind of with our team in India, um, which I'm part owner of that company. We, um, we started a wholesale service too for agencies and that's white label IQ. Um, mm. That agencies use, and 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 then we have a, this SaaS product, and basically everything we do is to make the marketer's life easier. It, it's either right. either services for those in the marketing departments of, of companies, manufacturers specifically, um, or agencies uh, trying to serve their clients too. We we understand both sides, and um, and so that it's been good, and um, love managing those those three companies, and and. Uh, couldn't do it without the people that we have. We have some pretty incredible um, leaders in each of those divisions. And uh, it's fun just to kind of be the chief troubleshooter. That's what I call myself. So Chief troubleshooter. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. And I would urge people, as I said, below this video, but go check out the book as well and make sure your brand is not irrelevant. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Thank you for watching and Thank listening. You, John. See you all again soon. Yeah.